starter motors are pretty straightforward. Um, there are a couple of bolts in the front, a couple of wires in the back, and that's pretty much it. So, in this case, what I'm going to have to deal with is there's a heat shield. It's anchored here by a bolt, and then on this end, there's two nuts that hold it on. So we'll take these nuts off and this bolt out, and that'll remove the heat shield. But like all car jobs, accessing the part you're trying to replace is most of the work. My preliminary reconnaissance indicates there's a heat shield here in addition to the heat shield that covers the starter and the idler arm may be in the way so I may have to unbolt the idler arm and and swing it out of the way we'll see if I have enough clearance or not also this top bolt is going to be semi blind I may have to use a long extension and just feel for it it's difficult to see the headers are coming down uh, which is ho uh, hiding some of the bolts in the bell housing of the transmission. So, let's start taking stuff apart. So here's the idler arm and the heat shield. So I'm holding the light, I can't really touch it. Let's see, the idler arm is there and the shiny thing, that's the heat shield. And there's just a couple of 8 millimeter bolts here. There are screws, like sheet metal screws. There's two up front and there's some in the back. There's wiring harness connected to it. I've had this out before. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So I was able to fish it out without having to remove anything else. I just kind of uh, figured it out and now I get to put the uh, new one back in. So of course the top bolt, which is the most difficult to reach, was in there fairly tight. And I had to really reach with a long extension. Uh, and break that loose with a breaker bar and I left it hooked up because that's going to be the first bolt I start I just left it all hooked up when I put the new one in I'm going to start this bolt and then I'll start the bottom bolt and then I'll hook up the electricals so I'll show you the tooling after I remove it but it's um, here's the wrench sticking out this is the back of the transmission uh, pan and the rear support member here's uh, the uh, exhaust brace I'm right behind the exhaust brace and right in front of the uh, O2 sensor the uh, pre-cat so it was a pretty long reach I uh, can't really show it very well don't have a good angle well it's actually pretty difficult to show you how I fished it in this is the uh, sway bar this is the torsion strut I just kind of fed it in here and then back towards the engine so it just lays right in there and then you can fish it forward you can uh, rotate it and fish it forward it's really difficult for me to film that all right the new starter is in place and time to hook up the electrical put the uh, heat shields back in place and test it i like using the original hardware if it's anywhere near in good shape because you know it's 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 really nice see how it has like a built-in washer there or whatever that also serves to keep it from falling into the uh, socket. So I'm going to put the original uh, nuts back on. So really the most difficult part of this job was getting that screw in that's right there in the center. There, there are three pieces of sheet metal that come together and they all have to go through that hole and then it's mounted there. So. There's a piece that holds this uh, junction box right here. There's the heat shield that I installed. Uh, and then there's uh, a wrap that goes around this uh, frame support that holds this line, this uh, bus line. All three of those pieces come together right here. And that was fun. Okay, as you may or may not know, this vehicle has convenience starting which means you just need to turn the key over to engage the starter and then it'll start and disengage all on its own. You don't have to hold the key to keep the starter going. So now here's the test. All right, good job. I do see some damage to some of the teeth, not all of them. 
Uh, it always started for me, but uh, the owner complained that he would turn the key and it would not start. That is to say, he didn't hear anything. It was like the battery was dead. So very few tools were needed for this job. So for the uh, heat shields and the electricals disconnect and reconnect, I used a quarter inch drive with a couple of different extensions. I needed uh, eight millimeter for the uh, heat shields and a 10 millimeter for the heat shields. And the eight millimeter and 10 were also used to disconnect some wiring from the starter. The 13 was used to disconnect the battery and the main power cable to the starter. And then I needed a E12 to disconnect the bolts to unscrew them and tighten them back up. Uh, for the bottom one, I just needed the E12, a short extension and a ratchet. For the top one, I used the E12, a universal, and I reached all the way back to the transmission. I used to break a breaker bar to break it loose. I'm showing the half inch just in case you have trouble with it. You can stick a half inch breaker bar on there if you need to break it loose. And then I just used a ratchet to loosen and tighten them up. I did not remove the bolts from the bell housing.